beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Number three, what is the third biblical index that measures growth and maturity? The outworkings of the power and the ability of God in and through your life. The third biblical index to know that a believer has now attained unto maturity is the outworkings of the power and the ability of God in and through your life. Wow. When we talk about the power of God, we're not necessarily talking about the charismatism around the display of power. We're talking about rising to a point of power and authority where what brought you down yesterday can no longer bring you down today because you have gained strength. Remember the Bible says the people that do know their God, they shall be strong. Strength is proof that you know God. What is strength? Capacity. 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 It says if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. There are people today who will tell you, I'm angry, I'm going to leave God, I trusted him to do something in my life, he did not do it, I'm hanging my boots, I'm tired. You see, that is, that is proof that your strength is small. When you get to a point where you build capacity, there is no going back. You burn that bridge behind you. For me to live is Christ, and even if I die, is gain. I fear that the Christianity we practice in Nigeria and Africa if not edited by love but firmness will not stand the test of time believers cheapen themselves at the slightest challenge hallelujah for me to live is Christ and to die is gain I have met many dangers in my life as a man of God it is, it, is only, it is only the God of heaven who has kept me. I can begin to tell you stories. The work that the Lord has given me started in Zaria. And for those of you who know Zaria, you know that that, that is a, it, it's a vola. I don't know how many crises happened in my presence. Strength. Some of you are already giving up because you have not built strength. I remember one time I was rushing to go for a meeting to connect to take a flight and go for a meeting and as soon as I was on my way to Kaduna they sent a text the airline that time I think it was Chanchangi or IRS and they now said the flight had been cancelled I just told the driver I said can you go to my Duguri it was my Duguri I was going it was a Friday 
it is dangerous to be around the road on a Friday afternoon in those regions. I said, can you go? He said, yes. I said, let's go. Because the believers, they needed a lot of strengthening. And I said, I was coming. They were so excited because several men of God would say, we are not coming. We love you, but we'll pray for you from afar and then send support. But you said you answered the call. I passed Kano barely one hour when there was a bomb blast and they declared curfew. You see that? That night, this, this is a long time ago, I slept in Potiskum at the gate because they were already fighting in Meduguri. And they said, you have to sleep. I slept inside the vehicle there. And I said, Lord, if it is for you, I will spend my life serving your purposes. This thing is not, when you see God lifting people by ask questions, behind every glory you see, there is a story. Just because you don't know the story does not mean there is no story. Hallelujah. I remember when I got there, I looked at the people and I said, my God. They were happy. They cried. They cried. They cried. They cried. I'm sure that we'll be able to make a sacrifice for those outside, even if it means to stand. Praise the name of the Lord. The outworkings of the power of God. Please look at me. You need the ability of God in your life. Principalities and powers and demons are real. The Bible is not silent as to the fact that we are not alone in this side of God's kingdom. Are we together? It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Please look up. There are many of us right now, the situations that we are going through, I tell you by the authority of scripture, is not a medical situation. It's a demonic situation. And if not dealt with by the power of God, it will eat up and destroy your life just like that. This is not about some charismatism or, or abuse of power and all of this. I'm talking about the provision that the word of God gives. God would be irresponsible to leave us in a domain cohabiting with Satan and not give us the means to be able to stand and defend ourselves against the wiles of the devil. Can I tell you this? If you do not have power, the devil would destroy your children destroy your future, destroy your health, destroy your finances. The language that the realm of the spirit understands is power. It's as honest and simple as that. Apologies to those who are not science-based. But for those who are science-based, when there is one of Sir Isaac Newton's law, I'll make it simple so everyone understands. Sir Isaac Newton, a former scientist and natural physicist, he postulated a few laws, the laws of mechanics. And one of them, I just want to pick one of them. He said that a body will remain in a state of rest or uniform motion. Is that true? Except compelled by an external force to act otherwise. In other words, you leave a thing here, you will find it here after 1,000 years. If it must move, there must be a force greater than what is keeping it to move it. That means your destiny will remain there. Age will not change it until a force moves you. Our children will remain there. L let me tell you this. By the privilege of God's grace, I've had the honor of ministering to people and conditions that if not by the mercy of God, those people would have died like chickens. We cannot allow the devil to keep oppressing us. Now I know that when we talk about the ministry of power, I submit to you there have been abuses and carelessness and all kinds of things in the body of Christ, you know, manipulations and this. I know, but just because something unreal is there does not mean something real is not there. Believe me, if your life is bankrupt of genuine spiritual power, you will not be able to survive the days we are in. Psalm 66 verse 3. Say unto God, it says, Psalm 66 and verse 3. How terrible art thou in your ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves
it takes the power of God Equa Plateau Church please listen to me there are many people destined by God upon the plateau that God has directed them to come and be blessed to come and be changed even in this assembly but I submit to you Satan will not fold his arms and allow the families that need to come and be blessed. There are gifted and skilled people that God has sent through our prayers to come. Paul said, I desire to come to you. Even I, Paul, once and again. He said, but Satan hindered us. Satan will hinder anything that is pro-Jesus, including your life. Make a declaration that my children will serve God. I will serve God. You have drawn a line. Satan will say, all right. This is not about being fanatical. This is the truth. I remember a gentleman who he was the only son of the mother. Graduated first class, true story. He went to collect his um, certificate, his statement. On his way returning, a, a bike or a car just came and cleared. The mother was rejoicing and said, I may have been a failure in life, but thank God he raised somebody that I will be able to rejoice before I pass on. And she just had a report that they just, just cleared. Don't tell me it just happened. No, sir. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. There is a real devil. There is a real adversary who is determined to thwart the purposes of God. Satan will not fold his arms and watch Plateau Church continue to rise and go from glory to glory, but it will take power to keep rising in spite of. If you believe, please say amen. amen. That Equa Plateau Church will keep going from glory to glory and grace to grace. It takes power. It takes power to move through the vicissitudes of life and to be able to emerge. There are many sincere people today, graduates, love the Lord, just when God wants to open a door for a good job to help the families, here comes Satan again. I wish I didn't have to tell you this, but I'll be lying to you. I have to bring to you the whole counsel of God. I have been a victim of demonic oppression myself. So I know what I'm saying. Hallelujah. I used to have a friend. He was a classmate. This gentleman got married. The wife just had a baby. And he called me one day crying. He was returning back. The wife was returning back. And then I think he had some encounters or something, some demonic things. And the wife and the baby burned to ashes. I don't mean to scare you. And I'm not playing with your mind. I'm only telling you the truth. If Satan has not come near you, don't think he doesn't know you are there. It is only that you have not made any impact for Jesus enough to attract his presence. But he's coming. So don't you laugh at the people. If you see any family that Satan is trying to attack, don't just laugh and feel they are not spiritual. Pray for them and pray for yourself. Because he came to Jesus. He will come to everyone. Jesus himself, you would think as the son of God, he would not come to him. Satan cometh to me, Jesus said. But it is my prayer that before he gets to you, the whole armor of God would have fortified you. That you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, Paul's final word to the church in Ephesus mentoring them on the things of the kingdom equipping them like this he said finally brethren 6 and verse 10 be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might the next verse please he says put on the whole armor the whole armor that means make sure that you are fortified so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil please look up you come up from a family and you say, Lord, would you empower me financially? I want to see to it that your church grows. I want to see to it that there is no need. I want you to know that it's not only angels that hear that prayer. Satan is hearing it too. 
what did you say that through your resources the kingdom will advance that is the end of it so the trouble that is in your place of work men are only puppets there are spirits behind the scenes manipulating men but you see I, I, I say this respectfully the ignorance of many believers is their unbecoming we interpret things sociologically why do people just hate me like that oh Elizabeth it's not about your barrenness God was Satan was fighting the arrival of John who will ordain Jesus it is not about your barrenness let me tell you this interpret every negative thing in your life as it connects to kingdom come there is nothing Satan does except he finds that it has a bearing to the purposes of God this way you interpret the things happening in your life and in others knowing this gives you the compassion to stand by people in their down times and say I know the fact that it looks like this family you are responsible you are loving the Lord but father is not working mother is not working we know that there is something Satan has seen that your excelling will do something to the kingdom are we together for everybody here we're about to pray who has experienced an attack and is experiencing some kind of attack in your life I am reading the writings on the wall for you believe me there may be roles you may have played in partnership or through ignorance but largely it is that Satan has plotted that graph and found out that if Elizabeth has a baby John will come and John will ordain Jesus who will save the world and so we fight Elizabeth it takes power to thwart the purposes of Satan not suggestions not sympathy when you read the messianic prophecy Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 4 Jesus reiterated it in Luke chapter 4 also here's what Jesus said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me Isaiah the prophet was speaking about Jesus for he hath anointed me, he says, to preach glad tidings to the poor or the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to set at liberty them that are in prison. Do you know there are men who are in prison? You will not see a physical prison. You know you are in prison where the only thing growing in your life is your age. When nothing else grows in your life, that is bondage. I wish I were lying I would have just said sorry I'm joking but I'm very very serious only God knows the schemings of Satan over your life between now and December don't sit down and say it will not happen many have made that arrogant bold claim to their detriment it will take power behold I give you power he says This has nothing to do, like I said, with abuse of power and fanatism. I know that there are people who have just made a jamboree and, you know, childishness and, and ill prepared people. Here and there, people have made mistakes around when it has to do with abuse of spiritual gifts. But please do not get into criticizing power because you will be making a mistake that may cost you your lifetime. It is true. It takes power to remain a man of God loving Jesus. The moment you answer the call of God upon your life, there are demons assigned to you to destroy you. Parents, only God knows the schemings of Satan over your children to rubbish and thwart their life. You may ask, what is Satan looking for? To use your life as a canvas and write that God is not faithful. But in this conference and in the name of Jesus, I dare by the Spirit of God to tell you that anyone's life that has come under captivity, this is the season where God sets you free. In the name of Jesus Christ. How about those who start a thing and never complete it? God is called Alpha and Omega, Jesus. Why do you start things and not finish? We give all kinds of explanation and it, it can. The, the physical reason may be government or individual or antagonisms. But I, I, I tell you, those are just the obvious answers, not the right ones. Satan is the, the control room 
behind the pain. John chapter 10 and verse 10. He says, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and kill and to destroy. Do you know what that means? You never see Satan around your life until there is something to kill, something to steal, and something to destroy. A particular man of God not too long went to bury his mother and when he got there they were done with the burial and then he was in the room with his dear wife and according to her she said she began to see light like a man flashing a torchlight just at the window and she was tapping her husband said, my husband who is flashing light at the door and she turned when she turned back she saw a dead body leaning on her that was it this is the world we live in. This is not to make you fear. My Bible says now, thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph. But you will not triumph just because you want to. It will take power. Hallelujah. I hope that as God grants grace by evening, we'll be able to have the time, even if it's just two to five minutes, to speak over people and let me request respectfully from the leadership that if you will allow may I request that in coming by evening I want everyone to please write your prayer request before the Lord do we agree well it's subject to the leadership that we will pray I assure you that which has kept you down if God be God in this conference this will be the end of it we do not make our boast by reason of anything we have in ourselves. The Bible says we do not claim to be sufficient in ourselves, but it says our sufficiency is of God who have made us able ministers after the new covenant. For the flesh, the latter killeth, but the spirit gives life. So I want to please plead and request, even for our family connecting from across the globe, I'm sure that through the social media platforms, you can submit your prayer request everything that has threatened you let's bring it before the lord are we together now yes and cry to the god of heaven who is able to arise that your life will have a consolation that indeed jesus christ is alive not just because you read it you can taste and see that the lord is good let's wrap up Number four, the first biblical index for growth and maturity, I said, is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Jesus Christ in experience. Number two, your depth of the comprehension of the principles of the kingdom and that authority in this kingdom is knowledge dependent. The dominion in this kingdom depends on knowledge. Number three, the outworkings of the power of God in and through your life and then number four the fourth biblical index to measure growth and maturity in this kingdom is your love life love for God and love for your fellow man first John please chapter 4 and verse 7 first John chapter 4 your love life love for God and love for men first john chapter 4 please please be patient and watch while i read beloved it says let us love one another for love is of god and everyone that loveth is born of god and knoweth god next verse he that loveth not he says knoweth not god for god is love next verse in this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. It's a long reading. Please keep on, Media. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, 
we ought also to love one another. In fact, let's just stop here. The full text is 7 to 21. But he says that we must love God and then love one another. Love God and love one another. John chapter 13, please, and verse 35. John 13, 35. John 13, 35. Here's what it says. By this, the demonstration of this love, shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we'll look at verse 31. But Paul there from chapter 12 began to mentor the church. Now theologically speaking, at that time, there was such a move of the Spirit, an outpouring of the Spirit as we call it, over the church in Corinth. And there were all kinds of manifestations of the gift of the Spirit. But with these manifestations, there was a lot of lawlessness. So Paul had to come to set things in order. Are we together? To the end that all things be done decently and in order. And part of that conference he held, now he began to help them understand what was happening to them. And when we get to 12 and verse 31, he now said different things about the gifts of the spirit, the gifts of prophecy, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. When we get to 31, you would think there is nothing else. He says, but covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet, show I unto you a more excellent way. Now 13 verse 1. He's showing us a more excellent way. 13 verse 1, the next chapter now. Chapter 13 verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men, he says. The word tongue, there's an ancient word for language. The language of men and of angels. And I have not love. He says, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Next verse. Though I bestow all my goods, I give. This is verse what now? Is that two? Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor charity and I give my body to be burned sacrifice and I have not love it profited me nothing verse 3 okay now okay I'm sure that's let's let's just continue charity or love suffereth long it is kind it envieth not it vaunted not itself it is not puffed up he's given the character of love next verse please it doth not behave itself unseemingly. It seeketh not her own. It is not easily provoked. It thinketh no evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Next verse. Love never fails. In fact, let's stop there. Very powerful statement. Love never fails fails do you know what this means that means anything you see failing add love to it he says love never fails a home that is failing add love to it a spiritual life that is failing like an ingredient add love to it love never fails he calls love the more excellent way the more excellent way of preaching is to preach in love the more excellent way of being a businessman is to be a businessman full of love the more excellent way to be a father is to be a father with love a mother with love a child with love a ceo with love that when that love factor is there you have the bond of perfectness can i tell you i know many prayer warriors who do not love people even though they love God. And the Bible says, how do you say you love God whom you have not seen? Many people love Jesus today simply because they've not seen him. If Jesus arrives on earth after one week, their love will expire. They will be tired of Jesus and fight him in a way that will be more than the way the scribes and the Pharisees fought him. Let me tell you this. Love, I'm wrapping up now. 
is based on a revelation it has nothing to do with emotions there is there are certain things that if you do not know you cannot love men two things I will tell you about men that will help you love men number one the best of any man is still a man that is the first information about men you want to be able to love men you must know that the best of every man no matter how well intentioned is still a man if you don't know this you cannot love men number two love is derived from the revelation that the same way Jesus Christ showed you undeserving kindness and mercy the same way if you were to leave us to fight for our salvation none of us will be saved the Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags you can love the unlovable when you understand what Jesus has done these are the four biblical indices to measure growth and maturity so the next time you say I am a matured Christian we do not argue but we bring the litmus test let me see is there in experience the formation of the character of Christ in you number two your level of spiritual enlightenment do you have sufficient knowledge to be able to command the kind of result that brings glory to the name of the Lord number three can we see the outworking of the power of God in your life I didn't have the time to teach on power if you're really studying on power you have to go to Genesis chapter 1 God himself showed us how power works in this kingdom you are as powerful to the degree to which what you say comes to pass That's it. and God said let there be and there was and he saw that what he said was good if you say especially in the name of Jesus and it does not happen something is wrong when he came to the centurion remember the centurion said no don't bother coming to my home I am a man of authority also I understand authority I have soldiers under me I say to one go and he will go to another come and he will come to another do this and he will do it Jesus I know that you are not by yourself you are also under authority speak the word only and Jesus said who taught you this I have not found this faith this understanding not in Israel can I tell you the day you speak over your life and over the people around you and it comes to pass I'm not talking of prophesying I'm talking of declaring with authority your words now become like the Word of God that you take the Word of God and you put it on the lips of faith and when you say God bless you and people say amen it's not just a ritual God bless you means all that it takes and God is able to make all grace abound towards you he says so that ye having sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work so when you say God bless you do you know what you are saying may God search your life for what is missing and ensure that it comes whatever will make you sufficient that is the meaning of God bless you that is the meaning of bless you Yet people say amen and in all honesty, nothing happens. We are going to pray. This night, we would be looking at another subject as I wrap up my session. The gospel. Now we looked at growth and maturity. And then now we'll be looking at the subject of kingdom advance and ministry by the time we return in the evening we're going to pray I want you to talk to the Lord whilst you're seated and let it come as a cry from the depth of your heart Lord I desire genuine growth I desire to increase from the lens of this teaching and this conference I have seen that I need to contend for exactitude in my spiritual life talk to the Lord just one or two minutes and then we're done for this session someone is talking to Jesus
let it be from the depth of your heart father I desire that my life becomes an expression of the character of the Christ in experience in words in lifestyle in my communication in my understanding for some you are praying and say Lord I confess ignorance in many areas many areas that support my excelling as a believer I confess that there is so much I do not know help me I am willing to learn and I'm willing to contend for exact growth through knowledge number three for many of us we've been buffeted by a plethora of ills around our lives health conditions mental conditions demonic oppressions all kinds of stagnations and 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 ill doings of darkness in our life it's time for us to pray father that you will visit me and supply the requisite level of spiritual power it takes to walk in the experience of liberty and finally we are going to pray for our love life the bible says it is by this that all men will know they will not know that we are people of god just by oratory or good preaching just by intelligence or money or cars and houses accolades as important as these things are the bible says the one biblical index that all men will use to know that we are his disciples is when we have love one for another now you are going to pray father take away this bitterness in my life i'm tired of holding on to bitterness whether against members against family against my brother my sister my husband my wife against the church against eldership lord i am ready to grow the bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and he says to run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto jesus he says the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross and even despised the shame talk to the lord in prayer grant me the grace let love begin to manifest in my life the grace to forbear the grace to forbid petty things that continue to clamp down my life and my progress i'm ready to let it go a new me is evolving from this conference in the name of jesus christ please look up this is the reason why we come to church these four pillars i gave you is the reason why you should invite people to come so the next time they ask you why are you going to church now you have an answer i am going to church because it is the platform authorized to sponsor my conformity to the image of the Christ in experience number two it is the platform that provides me the opportunity to gain spiritual intelligence as I am methodically mentored doctrine after doctrine topic after topic according to Acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the Bible says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in the breaking of bread and in prayers and in fellowship this was the strategy of the early church they continued steadfastly in the doctrine of the apostles and fellowship, breaking of bread and prayers. That's how they became mighty people. So when you come to church this evening, tomorrow and any other day, have it at the back of your mind that you are not doing the pastor or the elders a favor. It is you signing that register in the realm of the spirit. You are showing God your commitment and your intention for growth. I am coming because I desire to be like Jesus in experience. I am coming because I am aware of the vast ignorance and I need the requisite level of knowledge that supports my growth and my excelling. 
Number three, I am coming because I am aware that there is an adversary determined to thwart my life and then I come to access the power of God, the energizing of the spirit that gives me the stamina to be able to face life. Finally, I am coming because I am developing like that metamorphosis that happens to an insect from egg, larva, pupa, and adult. I am evolving into a new me. One who is full of love. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege of your word. The Bible declares again that the entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. We have submitted ourselves to your word. And Lord, we thank you for that which has come from the mouth of the Spirit. I pray in the name of Jesus that the grace to walk in keeping with these truths, that they, they do not end up as mere discussions, but that they sustain the power to transform us. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I am praying that you will bless everyone who has made the sacrifice to come here and to connect even um, to listen and to learn I pray that you will bless them father we pray for the meeting in the evening we pray that it will be a moment of encounter even by your spirit thank you again oh God for our pastors our elders they that labor in word and doctrine even over Equa Plateau Church thank you for the membership the loyalty the love the sacrifice the forbearance thank you because you are taking this family of faith from one level of glory to the other that equa plateau church will be like a trophy lifted even over the plateau in the name of jesus we pray that as we disperse for a while that you grant us grace that we return refreshed we return um, with greater passion even to learn may the lord bless you may the lord increase you for in jesus name i pray